What's up guys? You already know what it is. It's Ron from Metroholics. I'm gonna be slurring because I just got I got some braces. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the install on my uh, gauge cluster. And the first thing you gotta do with any electronic on your car is you gotta disconnect the battery. My battery's in the trunk, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it. And yeah, you don't need to know how to do it. You just disconnect the negative. All right, so in order to get to the uh, gauge cluster, the first thing you're gonna do is remove the lower uh, trim panel and it's held up by five uh, 10 millimeter bolts so here we go but once you get these bolts off um, just keep it together uh, so you don't lose anything um, the one thing you want is to lose bolts Probably gonna hate your life because you'd be searching for them and you can't find them. All right, so there it is. Um, if you haven't messed with your car before, you'll have a total of five bolts on the top. I believe there's one more bolt right here, and you have to disconnect the uh, hood latch. Um, I don't have a hood latch because I took it off, but it's basically two more 10 millimeter bolts here. So. In all, you should have five, six, seven, eight bolts to remove in order to drop this panel. Um, but I think I'm good. That's about it. And then I gotta do pull down. All right, panel release. So the bolts I was talking about was these two bolts are here. These two bolts are the ones that hold your uh, hood latch. So you're just gonna pretty much just undo them, and then the hood latch will just become loose, and that's gonna be able will allow you to uh, remove this panel. All right, so the next thing you wanna do now after you take the lower panel off is take the uh, steering wheel trim off. It's the top and the bottom. If you have a steering wheel, the OEM one, it could be a challenge, but it can be done. Quick release, you don't have it, so it won't be in your way. Um, so yeah, if you haven't messed with it, you're gonna be removing, I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So a total of six screws to remove it. I don't even put them back on just for the ease of it, so I just pull it off, so pretty much this will be good. Alright, done. So once you take that off, you should have a little bit more room. Um, the next thing you want to do in order to take this plastic uh, shroud off is you got to take off your uh, indicator. So the best way to do it is simply by pushing down pop up. So you push down and pull out. Oh, there goes the dummy one, but that doesn't matter. And then once you get that off, obviously disconnect. This is going to be the dumb part. So there's a little tab you press down, so you press on the tab and pull the indicator out. It can be hard, but whatever Put it down the tab. wiggle it out Pull down the tab. wiggle it out all right so the one thing I forgot to mention once you pull this out the the dimmer switch uh, the best way to get to the dimmer switch is once you remove the lower panel you're gonna actually have to fish down here and remove that dimmer switch from the back um, by pressing on the clips so these are the clips you're gonna probably have to use like a long uh, flathead and you're gonna have to just you know navigate through the back to remove this um, but yeah once that's done uh, you should be able to move this part to make this job easier I highly suggest that you do drop the steering column um, there's gonna be uh, two bolts here I forget what size but I'm gonna try to show you it it's going to be this bolt right here and adjacent to it. So there's two bolts that will allow you to drop the steering column down to give you more room to pry this plastic piece out. Alright, so yeah, you just uh, unscrew these two 12 millimeter bolts right here. It's what holds the steering column. And you should be able to drop the steering column enough to give you the space. So let's try. And again, 
Just keep track of your bolts because you don't want to be uh, having to search for them. All right, cool. So that should give us enough room. All right. So this should give you enough space to maneuver this plastic shroud off. If it doesn't, there's two more bolts that we gotta remove and then that will entirely drop the uh, column down to the floor. But let's try and see if we can get it out. Four mounting spots that hold up the steering column. Right here you see them, there's two. These are gonna be 12 millimeter bolts. And then directly straight down, there's gonna be two uh, 12 millimeter nuts. Um, those nuts, you don't have to take them off. Just go ahead and um, loosen them to where you can actually have this this look right here. Cause this is pretty much all you need in order to take it off now. Um, but yeah, so once you're at this point, you can unhook this. If you didn't mess with your car before, I believe there's some bolts on the bottom and two screws on the top that you have to remove. So this comes off. Just like that. Might have to do some jiggle room. And bam. Off. The next thing you're going to do is take off the three screws that hold the gauge cluster in. So it's two right here and one in the middle. So. Save these screws because these screws are the screws you're going to be using to mount up the uh, gauge cluster uh, panel that uh, that I have. And also I, I'll put a link to where I bought it. So pretty much those will be the same screws you use to mount up that panel. Almost there guys. Alright, so the next thing you're going to do now is um, remove the sub harness. Since I already made the sub harness from uh, the pre on the previous video, we're going to actually take this whole unit off. So uh, to make things easier, we'll just disconnect the ones on the gauge cluster and then we have to fish back here to remove the remaining two uh, clips. <laughs> the white one, you can see it's right there and then the black one um, if you haven't messed with it it's going to be wrapped with a brown like foam insulator type deal but those are the two that you're going to have to remove in order to take out the sub cluster harness there's a white clip um, not the connector but the one next to it um, you're going to have to remove that in order to remove the harness um, it's pretty much just like a support clip it holds the wires to that mounting tab on the uh, bar right there so uh, you don't have to cut it off you don't have to break it um, you just have to undo the uh, clip and then that should come out so this right here is the modded uh, subcluster harness that I made on the previous video um, these two plugs right here are going to be the plugs that connect to um, underneath the dash so corresponding white to white and the black to black and then these right here will connect to all the gauges um, and uh, pretty much since I already labeled them, it's going to be like a plug and play. So I'll go ahead and do that and then show you the finished product. Alright, so right now I am just uh, feeding through uh, the, which one is this? Oh, this is the um, wide band uh, harness. So I'm just going to feed it through um, and in another video I'm going to show you guys how to hook up the wide band. Um, but this right here is the wide band uh, harness. So I'm just going to feed it through and... Um, just get it out the way so I can start putting this cluster in. So just find a spot. It's all insulated so you don't have to worry about it uh, chafing or rubbing on metal. It's a pretty good insulator. So yeah. Alright so we're just going to do that and call it a wrap. Alright and bam we're done. Should be fine there. Alright. Now the next thing we're going to do is um, this right here, as mentioned in the previous video, these are going to be all the connectors we need to connect to to power up the gauges. Um, so this is the power to ground and the green one is my tachometer. So we just got to find power ground and tachometer and we should be good to go. So I believe power is the green one. Yep. So that's going to go to the red. 
like that. Black is the ground. So ground. So plug in like that. Okay, and tachometer. I think it's the yellow and red. Yep. Tachometer goes to tachometer. So that right there will power up the boost gauge, the tachometer, and the uh, wide band. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the uh, individual uh, power grounds for the high beam indicator and the left and right turn signal. So that's next. Uh, this is where it's going to become tight because I didn't leave me enough room, but we'll make it work. Essentially, we are good to go. Power ground to everything. Um, you don't have to worry about this one right now. Uh, this will be on another video. This is going to be the uh, boost gauge um, signal. So you just have to get a vacuum source from your, um, I think it's off of the throttle plate. Um, off of the throttle, actually, there's a little nipple there that you can uh, sp uh, hook into. So that's it. And we're good to go. So now all you got to do now is put the wires in here nice and neat and we are ready to go hook up the battery cross the fingers uh, good to go hopefully so let's go ahead and just make this look pretty real quick it's gonna be a tight space now I've got all these extra wires in the way but gotta do, gotta do. all right sorry I uh, put all the wires behind the panel um, I was only able to use one of the screws because I just found out that I need a longer bolt because there's a lot of space between here and the mounting tab so I just got to find a longer bolt resolve that issue but I have one already uh, mounted up should hold the panel in place it's pretty much the middle one and uh, now we just put everything back in reverse order all right so the first thing we do is install the uh, gauge panel shroud plastic piece I didn't do any measurements, so I barely cleared that, guys. Woo! I thought I was going to have to redo it. All right, so that is secured. The next thing you're going to do is uh, wire the uh, indicators. You just got to feed the wires through. Car up. Hey, get my seat up real quick. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Hey, right. turn this bad boy on. Alright, 
We're looking pretty good. Uh, left signal. up all right guys so i was gonna do the uh the gauge install i installed it the other night and um i was having some issues with my turn signal um and also like when i turn on my headlight stock to like the running lights my right blinker would actually stay on so i don't know what's going on um in theory uh on paper it should it should have worked probably has to do with something uh with the uh with the board here, there's, there's probably something within this that's not allowing me to run the custom cluster setup that I wanted to. Um, so in that uh, in that light, I'm gonna have to just do it the old school way: power ground from the ignition switch, which you know it worked like with anything in this car. It's like a trial and error. Uh, you live and learn, and um, yeah. So I'm gonna have to postpone this uh, gauge cluster. I'm just gonna give you guys an update on what's going on um but i'm so close guys i'm so close to having it work uh, i'm asking on the forums if there's any s13 wiring gurus out there i need your help um to wire up this uh gauge cluster if you watch the series or if you haven't some background history i'm pretty much using the oem subcluster harness uh to power up my gauge i'm using you know tack signal i'm using left and right blinker signal the high beam signal all from here but yeah so stay tuned um this is an unfinished project once i get it up and running i will post a video i promise of it working um in all this glory uh because i want it to work um, i'm tired of this oem one it's just you know i just want to jazz up the interior uh, thanks again for watching i'm sorry guys i failed you um but yeah I'll, I'll come back and make sure that i'll be able to make this work and hopefully if you guys do do this um the problems I run into, uh, you won't run into it. So.